Well, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great. Uh, welcome to another vlog. And uh, this time we're in Namibia. Yes, Namibia. Uh, I've been planning this trip for quite some time and it just happened to kind of coincide pretty close to Spain. So two trips in a couple of months is, is, is pretty good going for me. Uh, it was pretty hard to get down here. I, I've come down here with my partner, Karen. Karen and I haven't been on holiday for uh, quite a few years now. So we decided to come to South Africa and uh, might as well make it a kind of a travel work holiday. So we're down here to take some photographs in the Drakensberg with photographer Alex Nail. But we figured, well, it's such a long way to come from Vancouver that, you know, a week and a half is not really long enough. So we've extended our trip and we're now in Namibia. Uh, now, Africa is, for those of you that have been here, know that it's, it's a long trip, especially if you live in the Pacific Northwest. So we've taken two flights, uh, both 10 hours long, one from Vancouver to London, London to Johannesburg, and then Johannesburg, another two hour flight to Windhoek. And then we rented a car and drove for three or four hours to our first lodging. So you can imagine by the time we got there, we were pretty knackered. <laughs> so we spent a couple of nights there just kind of relaxing. And now we've come down south to an area called the Quiver Tree Forest. And I'm sure that a lot of you that have photographed in this area before have probably photographed this, this spot. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. We came here last night and I decided not to do any vlogging. I just wanted to check it out, take a few photographs. And uh, the forest is just, just mind blowing. The tree, I've never seen anything like it. So that's where we are this morning. Uh, it's still pretty dark, but we're gonna make our way in and uh, see if we can find some more compositions. So I can hope you, I hope you can join me for the rest of the video. So when we first got here, one of the first things that we noticed were these huge nests. And uh, you see them all over the landscape. Some of them are massive and they're created by what's called a weaver bird. And uh, we were told that you could get up to three to 500 birds in one nest. So this, this nest could be like 40 years old. Uh, we were also told not to stand underneath them because snakes drop from them now and then. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna test that theory. So as I mentioned, we got here uh, last night and uh, during the day, it's, it's just too hot to photograph anything. Plus the, the light is not fantastic. Uh, it's been going up to 30, 38, 39 degrees Celsius, uh, around hundred degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty hot and uh, being, you know, pretty white and gonna get burnt really, really easily. Uh, but the evenings last night was just absolutely incredible. We, we, we kind of lucked out because we had quite a lot of cloud cover last night. So we got some color in the sky and just absolutely stunning light. This morning, uh, there were a lot of clouds in this area, but it looks like they're all dis it's all dissipating. So as soon as the sun comes up, uh, we're gonna be really short in time to get photographs in good light. But luckily, because I was here last night, I had a chance to scope some area, areas out, take some photographs. And this tree, which is actually right near the beginning of the trail, uh, really struck me because it's quite a bit taller and more slender than the other trees. It has such a, a wonderful top to it as well. So uh, I took some photographs last night. I quite like them, but I, I kind of figured I should have cropped in just a little bit tighter. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning, is set up a shot for this and then have the other quiver trees uh, just in the background here. The really nice thing about this forest is that the trees are so well separated, it's very easy to you know, find one tree with a lot of character and then kind of set it apart from your main subject so that uh, you have a group of them and, and looks nice and clean. Plus, these rocks are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, they really add a lot of dimension and uh, uh, depth to, to the photographs, especially when the light starts to hit them. So let's set up for this and, uh, and see what we can do. Well, the composition that I was after that morning just didn't uh, materialize. 
And the main reason being is the light just wasn't cooperating. You really need that directional light to separate those trees in the background. What I did do though is uh, crop the composition out of the original file from the day before and of course I'm using a medium format camera 100 megapixels so when I do a drastic crop like this it still maintains quite a bit of great detail so uh, that is one advantage to using a medium format camera. All right I, uh, I abandoned <laughs> that uh, that composition for the moment. The reason being is that uh, the the sun is blocked by the clouds uh, so we're not going to get some sun for a little while now and uh, without directional light it looks quite busy because the the trees just behind that main tree um, they have other trees behind them so you need that light to kind of separate them so what I've decided to do is look for individual trees like this one and get down low so that I can just include the sky behind them rather than uh, lots of other trees like a forest and this one's quite nice and there's lots of situations where you can do this you can have one tree you can isolate it in the foreground and then kind of compose it so you have another one or two in the background because like I said they're, they're well separated so uh, yeah it works out really well and again we have these rocks so that just adds a little bit more interest <laughs> Good evening everybody, we're back at it again and of course uh, the light is fading really fast so I don't have a lot of time to take photographs uh, but what I did, uh, this, is, this area is called um, uh, uh, Giant's Playground I believe and uh, as you can see there's a lot more rocks here than uh, the area that we were at this morning and the neat thing about this is we have these rock structures but we also have some of these quiver trees growing in between the boulders so after this morning's session uh, Karen and I came here just to check it out in the midday sun and I took a few cell phone shots just to kind of get some ideas of compositions and luckily there's three trees here that uh, have quite a bit of potential I really love the one that I'm doing right now um, it uh, we have two trees and then it's surrounded by these boulders and of course we have really beautiful light right now that's only going to last another <laughs> five or ten minutes but um, yeah it's beautiful really is beautiful uh, over to the east here we do have some clouds so I'm hoping for a bit of color in the clouds as well As you can see the light is fading really quickly but it, it's just absolutely beautiful so we've lucked out again this evening thank you to my lovely assistant Karen 
for showing me this angle on the tree. I was having a really hard time. I really wanted to photograph this tree here and I was mucking about over there and it just didn't look quite right. It's, it's hard to kind of separate it from the, the pinnacles, but from here, I can separate it from the background pinnacles and uh, there's this really nice roundish boulder that I can separate from the background as well. So uh, it worked out really well. I'm doing a, a 65 by 24 pano because the foreground here is just dirt and, and grasses that don't really add anything to the composition. And above that, uh, it's pretty much blue sky. So there's some really nice color in the clouds behind. So I'm just concentrating on that and the rocks and the one little tree there. There is a third composition that I wanna try, but I think I might be too late for that one. But uh, we'll see how it goes. What I did notice about the quiver forest was that the light tended to be better in the evening. The afterglow usually lasted for quite some time well after the sun had gone down. So we learned very quickly that just because the sun has gone down doesn't mean to say that the light has ended. The afterglow often lasted for at least another half hour or so and it was so intense that uh, everything around us just turned red as you can see in these photographs here. Once again folks, thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I really appreciate it. I also appreciate your comments and your thumbs up. If you'd like to support my channel in other ways, be sure to head on over to my website where I have a number of items for sale. And I've just started up a Patreon page where you can find uh, behind the scenes photographs and videos. So go check that out. All right, till next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.